Shut up and sit down. Hey guys, welcome to my channel and Merry Christmas. Today is December 25th, so this is a Christmas ride, and today I'm reviewing the Copenhagen Wheel. I've had it for a little more than a year and a half. I've taken it on two large trips, one time on the Jersey Shore, and uh, the other time I did the Erie Canal Trail Ride. Uh, just finished that not too long ago. You guys have uh, hopefully seen all the videos. And I figured now it's time for a review. There are some positives, there are a lot of negatives. And um, unfortunately, I think that the negatives probably outweigh the positives of it. Um, it's got some power. It'll get you where it's going. It's where you, where you want to go as long as where you want to go is honestly less than 15 miles away from where you're starting. They uh, say that in eco mode, it'll get you 30 miles. And that simply isn't true. I ride it in eco mode all the time. Um, where I used to work, was about 10 miles away and I would ride it to work and I would show up to work and I would have about uh, maybe 10% battery left so I would have to charge it at work to get home yeah the uh, the 30 miles in eco mode that's that's just not a thing and yes the trike is heavier than a standard bike and yes I'm heavier than a standard rider but not so much heavier that it cuts the range more than in half. So there, there's something else going on. It also has a tendency to overheat, especially on hills. And let's face it, if you have one of these pedal assist motors, you have this pedal assist motors for hills. So if you're riding it on the hills and it overheats and shuts off for your protection, then, you know, uh, you're probably better off with a motor that's not gonna do that. And the reason it overheats is because the batteries are in the actual motor compartment. So you've got the heat of the motor, the heat of the batteries, all working with each other to uh, kind of form the perfect storm. To uh, basically heat each other up and eventually the batteries just get too, too hot for the system to uh, safely handle. And at first it'll shut down uh, regenerative braking, which I probably should have said that a little sooner. It has regenerative braking, which means uh, when you're going down a hill, you pedal backwards and it will uh, put a slight charge back into your motor while slowing you down, which is a really cool feature. I love that feature. I love that when you're going downhill, you pedal backwards and it slows you down. You don't have to brake. You don't have to use your disc brake. You don't have to wear your brake pads out. And it's, it keeps you warm while you're doing it because you keep your legs moving. But uh, if you had just overheated, um, then that's not gonna work. So uh, that feature's gone for you. So that's kind of a negative. Another negative, besides the extremely limited range and the fact that it overheats on hills, honestly is the customer support. When, uh, when I first got it and it was overheating a lot, I would try to contact customer support over and over again. And they were just completely non-responsive. In order for them to be responsive, I had to initiate a chargeback with my credit card. And once I initiated a chargeback and I told them I initiated a chargeback, it was, it was like a light switch went off. It went from uh, completely, no, we're not gonna be there to help you, I mean, they didn't say that, they just weren't there to help me To Yes sir, sorry sir, what can we do for you sir? And even then, they, uh, they weren't really as helpful as they said they were going to be. They kept saying they were going to do one thing and then they did another. And uh, they were saying that it was a mistake and I believe them. They aren't a well uh, organized company I don't think. And from what I can tell, they're kind of getting out of the, uh, the consumer bike business and they're uh, getting into the, uh, the public scooter business, kind of like, uh, I believe it's called Lime, where uh, they uh, just dump thousands of scooters in a city before they get the permission from the city. You know, once they're there, it's better to ask uh, for forgiveness than for permission, I guess. So I, I think that's where they're heading. So uh, yeah, the uh, customer support, non-existent. So that's another negative. 
the positives and there are some positives one it's easy to install I mean it comes already the tires on it all you got to install it is swap out your wheels and hook your phone up to it there's no wires nothing it's uh can't even say plug and play because there's no plug I mean you got to charge it so you got to plug it into the charger but other than that other than that it's a good system it's it's a great concept it's a sleek design it's really pretty uh, you know the nice red wheel it's uh, low profile so uh, not a lot of wind resistance I do wish because it is a rear wheel design and not a mid wheel I wish there was a safety backup that in case something happened like your chain broke that you could make it so that you could ride home without it like have a have a lever or something on your smartphone so that you could uh, have it creeping you don't have to uh, get off your bike and push like you would with a mid drive so it's pretty easy to use first thing you gotta do is open the app and you click ride and it's already connected sometimes you have to click connect and then you'll see a little thing that's got your wheel listed and uh, then you click connect and it's ready to go it uh, pretty much stays connected through Bluetooth on your from your phone um, and uh, that's it I mean you, you have eco mode you have a uh, standard mode and you have turbo mode these are the three different speeds they each take a significantly more power so eco mode takes the least power then standard and then uh, turbo mode takes the most power it's kind of hard to do this with my gloves but then you also have you have off and then you have exercise mode now when you're in exercise mode it makes it significantly harder to pedal it slows you down and it actually will charge your battery a little bit through the regenerative braking which is kind of nice Yeah, I mean, it, it puts a lot, a lot of resistance. Like, I am pushing very, very hard on this slide up that should be a breeze to get up right now. Uh, just to maintain five miles an hour. I mean, I am rocking back and forth just to keep it going. Oh, I dropped down the floor. So that's a cool feature that it has. That's one of the cool features that it has. And a lot of the uh, motors out there don't have that. In fact, I don't think any of the other motors have that. Uh, at least I haven't seen any motors that have that. I'm gonna take it off of exercise. Now I have it all off. I'm gonna go back up this hill. It's a little steeper from this side. And it should be significantly easier, even though it's steeper without any assist I'm going six miles an hour and I'm not having to push nearly as hard oh, I just hit seven back down to six I mean it's not easy by any means especially in the gear I'm in but it's a lot easier than in exercise mode so that's a uh, so that's one of the positive features of this thing on the eco oh and that's a lot easier that just uh, it's like someone else is helping me pedal go to standard turbo and honestly it's like I'm just moving my feet in turbo I'm not a big fan of turbo mode the only time I use turbo mode typically is when I'm on a uh, really really steep hill and uh, eco is just not cutting it no matter how hard I push I'm not getting up it but uh, yeah the three modes are pretty cool 
Honestly, the biggest down. Honestly, the biggest. Honestly, the biggest drawbacks for the Copenhagen wheel. I'm gonna say there's three of them. There's the limited range. And I mean the seriously limited range. The customer support or lack thereof. And the fact that the company seems to be going away from the bikes and the motor for the bikes and going towards the scooters. I think that in the future that's going to be another major drawback. The good things. It's streamlined. It's easy to use. The interface is very intuitive. There's one problem with this app. And that is, if you stop, just stop at a stop sign, and it's for more than a few seconds, it's tracking you the whole time and it's mapping you. But it stops, and then it starts again, but it's it's starting new. And so you don't have a, uh, a full review of your ride. You have a bunch of small, tiny reviews from stop sign to stop sign, basically. From stop and go to stop and go. So if you really, if you want to track your ride, and let's face it, you probably want to track your ride with a, a real program anyways, like a Map My Ride or Strava. That being said, the range is an issue, but there is a hack. There is a hack to increase your distance. And I'm gonna show that to you. So it's not Christmas anymore. It's actually a couple days later. Um, I got back to the garage. I was gonna show you the hack and I realized that the thing that I use with the hack, this thing right here, this thing I got on Amazon, I was lucky enough to get it on Amazon really cheap, no longer worked. So I took it upstairs, I took it apart, I tried to fix it and I didn't have any luck. Uh, Quite often with these things, if you let it go dead and they stay dead too long, uh, then you've got to take them apart. You've got to charge the batteries individually uh, to get them to uh, start back up. So I did that and I was hoping it would work, but I think the problem was something else. I think there's a problem with the board and that I don't know how to fix. So I have to get a new one. So, but I can still show you what the hack is. Um, it's actually pretty simple. And it has to do with this guy right here. This is the charger for the Copenhagen wheel. Now with the charger for the Copenhagen wheel, um, you can't charge while the Copenhagen wheel is running. At least you're not supposed to be able to charge with the Copenhagen wheel running. So this is the male charge port. These two prongs, this one and this one, that's the positive and negative. That's what actually charges the wheel. That's all you need to charge this wheel. These other four little prongs, those are basically safety sensors. Those are designed to talk to the wheel, to uh, give it warning, to give it information. Uh, basically, those are there to tell the wheel, I'm plugged in, don't run. So what you wanna do with this hack is cover those up with a little piece of electrical tape, but you don't wanna cover the two big prongs up. Once you have that, you simply plug this guy in like that. Turn the wheel on. You take a functioning power supply and you plug it in. Unfortunately, this one is no longer functioning because the battery pack that goes in it is right here. Eventually I'll have another one of these for it, or I'm just gonna replace the Copenhagen wheel altogether. It really could be a great wheel. There's so much potential to it. I, I think they're kind of giving up on the Copenhagen wheel. I'd say that uh, you're better off just uh, if, if you don't already have the Copenhagen wheel and you're looking for a motor, there's a lot of other motors out there, the Magic Pi. Um, I've heard really good things about that. It's a lot cheaper. It's a little more complicated to install, but once you have it installed, um, I've heard good things. The Bafang, it's a uh, it's a front motor or a mid-drive motor on most most bikes, but on a trike, it's a front motor. It's a lot of good ones. Anyway, I'm going to be switching this motor because I'm just not happy with this one. Yeah. So if you have recommendations on a good motor setup that I can replace it with. You know, comment down below. 
if you've had uh, other experiences with the Copenhagen Wheel, if you disagree with my assessment of it, if you disagree with my assessment of their support, if you agree or disagree with anything I've said, comment down below. Let me know. And uh, like always, please like, follow, share, comment, and subscribe. And have a great day and Merry Christmas. Bye.